You ought to glorify his holy name. Hallelujah. God is good. He's good all the time. All the time, God is good. We want to, we want to minister from this subject today. Praise party. We came to have a praise party. So we came to have a praise party. So I want to tell you right now, even while I'm ministering the word of God, if I say something that hits your spirit, just give up and give God a praise. Now, if God has been good to you, just give God a praise. Hallelujah. God has been too good. Can't sit down on him now. We got to praise his holy name. So don't worry about it. You ain't going to disturb me. I'm going to keep on preaching. But if you want to give God a praise, give him a praise. If you want to give him a hallelujah, give him a hallelujah. You want to say thank you, Jesus, give him a thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We came to praise his name. We came to have a praise party up in the house of God today. And we came to have a praise party in the house of God today. I don't know about you, but I used to go to some house parties. And we used to have some fun in them house parties. But I came to invite you to a different kind of party today. It's called a praise party. When we went to the house party, it was all about us. But when we come to the praise party, it's all about God. We're praising and glorifying His holy and divine name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put up that invitation for me. I got an invitation. I want to invite you to the praise party because when you have a party, you have to send out invitations. And this invitation reads a praise party. You are invited to celebrate with us uh, on Sunday, and the day is August the 7th at 10 o'clock a.m. Where is the destiny? Where is the party at? 1341 McCoy's Ferry Road, Lugol, South Carolina. What are the instructions? The instruction is RSVP unto God the Father, Jesus Christ the Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and our guide. Have you accepted the invitation? Are you in the house of God? Did you RSVP the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? If you did, give him a shout. Give him a praise. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a thank you, Jesus. Give him whatever you deserve to give him. He's been too good. Uh, I'm saying, God, get this praise party in the spirit, God. I woke up this morning. I put on some praise music. I just wanted to praise God coming down the highway. Praise God when I got on the church ground. Praise God when I came into his gates. Praise God everywhere I go. I praise him in my bathroom. I praise him in my shower. Every now and then, you just got to have a praise party. Oh, Lord. I'm going to approach it differently today. Now, I gave you some scriptures. We're coming from uh, Psalm 118. But I'm not going to read it to you verse by verse. I gave you that for you to have as a reference. I'm going to break down these verses in a different category and say why we praise God. Why is it we want to have a praise party? There should be a purpose behind having a praise party. And the reason we want to have a praise party is found in verse number one. I am going to put up verse number one. I'm going to put up verse, they're going to put up verse number one. This is what we all need to do. In verse number one, David is talking about it. And I want you to understand that Psalm 118, 118 can be for an individual and can it be for a collective group. If you can be going through something on your own and sometimes you can be going some, through something as a church, sometimes you can be going through something as a family, but I tell you in the end, if you realize, you need to stand and give God some praise. Every time you think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for you, your soul out of crowd, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. All right, so verse number one says this. And I want us to walk in obedience today. The verse number one says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good. Anybody want to stand up and give thanks to the Lord? Anybody want to just stand on your feet and give thanks to the Lord? You want to thank God that you got food on your table? You want to thank God that you woke up in your right mind? You want to thank God that you had activity of your limb? Hallelujah. We ought to give God a thanks. We ought to give him thanks because he's what? Wait a minute, you got it. We 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 have a praise party now. When you at a party, you don't be acting like you can't open up your mouth. At a praise party, you got to say something. I say we ought to oh give thanks to the Lord, for he is what? 
Hallelujah. He's good. And his mercy endures forever. The one thing you need to understand is that his mercy endures forever. That means that no matter how much we leave God, he's always open to take us back. His mercy endures forever. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Oh, I thank God for saving me. I thank God for saving me. You got to understand what mercy means. If you understand what mercy means, you might get excited and you might join us at our praise party. Mercy simply means forgiving a sinner. I don't know about you, but I was once a sinner. And I thank God that he forgave me. Anybody excited that you were once a sinner and God forgave you. You ought to give God a hand praise. You ought to give God a shout hallelujah. You ought to say, God, I thank you. I deserve to die, but you let me live. And I just want to come by today just to say thank you. Uh, no, no, not only, not only does he forgive us uh, as sinners, uh, but this is the most important part. He forgives us as sinners and he holds back the punishment. Oh, I thought that would excite somebody. I thought that it, when, you, when, you, when you commit a crime in this world, they put you in jail and they give you the punishment. But when you come before God and say, I have accepted your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and my Savior, not only do he forgive us, but he holds back the punishment. When you go before a judge, when you be glad if the judge said, you're guilty, but I'm going to set you free. That's what Jesus did. And you ain't excited about the fact that he did that. If you got anything inside of you, you ought to be standing on your feet saying, God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I magnify your name. Now, now, in verses 1 through 4, I told you, now I gave you the scripture for reference, but in verses 1 through 4, you can study this when you go home. I'm going to break it down for you. In verses 1 through 4, they, uh, David said, give God thanks because he's good. Who did he ask to give thanks? He said, Israel, stand up and repeat after me. God mercies endures forever. He said, Israel, let God know that you appreciate him. Let God know that you are thankful to him because his mercy endures forever. You better be excited about his mercy enduring forever. You know how some of us was living. You know that some of us should be dead. You know that some of us should be in jail. You know that some of us ought to have all kind of diseases. But God's grace and God's mercy is fair. Even though we deserve it, he held it back from us. He says, so Israel, Israel, you stand up, Israel, and you repeat after me, God's mercy endures forever. Then he called on, on, on the house of, uh, he called on the house of Aaron. He said, Aaron, and Aaron represents the priests. Aaron's uh, family was priestly family. He said, Aaron, repeat after me, his God's mercy endures forever. And then he said, uh, people that love God, he's talking about Gentiles, those individuals who the Israelites thought we shouldn't have been accepted in Jesus. But when Jesus died, he didn't just die for the Israelites. He didn't just die for the priests. He died for everybody that believe in Jesus as Savior. He said, those of you who fear the Lord, you ought to say, God's mercy endures forever. That means that when we mess up, he still loves us. That means that when we don't do right, he still loves us. That means when we act crazy, he still accepts us back. Because his mercy endures forever. Because he's good. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's a kind God. He's a forgiving God. And I want to praise him every chance I get. I don't care whether I'm in church, whether I'm on the job, whether I'm in Walmart, 
when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Oh, yes, hallelujah. I'm excited about his saving. I'm excited that I'm able to stand before you. I'm excited that I'm able to preach God's word. I'm excited that he didn't let me die. I thought about some things that happened in my life when I was growing up. I could have died from it. I remember when he attacked my body with a disease at an early age. But the doctor said, I'll never be the same again. But Jesus said something different. That's my servant. That's my beloved son. I'm going to touch his body and I'm going to heal him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. So when you see me, I get crazy. And you see me praising God. I can't help myself. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But it was like fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't keep it to myself. Because God is good. Oh, God is good. Oh, God is good. Let me tell you why God is good. Because in verses 5 through 9, I'm doing it different. I ain't going to read every verse to you today like I normally do. I want to do it different. The Holy Ghost say do it a little different. But I'm going to tell you ahead in verses 5 through 9, we have evidence that his mercy endures forever. Because David said it like this. David said, I called on the Lord when I was in distress and when I was in trouble. I called on the Lord. And not only did I call on the Lord, is the reason why I'm telling you to praise God is because he heard my prayer. He, he heard my cry. Have you ever called on the Lord? Have you ever needed the Lord? Have you ever been in trouble? Have you ever felt pressed down? And you call on the Lord and he heard and answered your prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Not only, not only did he answer my prayer, David said, but I found out something else. When he answered my prayer, I realized he was on my side. And if God before us, Romans 8 and 31 says, if God before us, who in the world can be against us? What you worried about a man for? What you worried about a woman for? All you need to know is that God is on my side. Supervisor, you better watch who you fooling around with. God is on my side. You got a main neighbor. You better watch how you treat me because God is on my side. Church member, you better be careful how you talk about me because God is on my side. And if God is on my side, you can't beat me. You can't defeat me. You can't take me down because if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? Hallelujah. Shout, that's right. We are a praise party. And at a praise party, let him shout it out. Let him cry. I told you we had a praise party today. Shout and shout and praise God. Give God thanks. Hallelujah. I need it. I need to repeat that. The Holy Ghost said, you need to repeat that. The Holy Ghost said, you need to repeat that. Let me repeat that. The Bible says uh, that, that David cried out to the Lord. And when he cried out to the Lord, the Bible said that the Lord heard him. And the Lord answered his prayer. And because God answered his prayer, David said, the Lord is with me. And because the Lord is with me, I don't have to fear nobody because the Lord is with me. The Lord is on my side. You can't keep me from being promoted. You can't destroy my business. You can't destroy my family. You can't destroy my children. You can't destroy me because the Lord is on my side. Is he on your side? Do you think the Lord is on your side? Then you ought to let somebody in this house know that you believe the Lord is on your side. Don't you hold back your praise. God has been too good to you. Don't you be ashamed. When you had a praise party, you got to let it go, baby. You know how when we was at a party, we didn't hold back nothing. Give me a little bit more, just a little bit, just a little bit. I don't want to hurt myself up in here, but I'm excited, and I love what David said. He said, because I know the Lord is on my side, I don't fear nobody. You can look at me crazy, but I don't fear you. You can talk about me, but I don't fear you. 
You can lie on me, but I still don't fear you. You can try to take what you think I don't deserve, but I don't fear you. Why? Not because I'm bad. Not because I got it together. I'm, I'm like that because God is on my side. Something about God being on your side. It gives you confidence when you know the Lord is on your side. There's something about God on your side. You can go in the doctor's office and the doctor can give you a bad report. And you can look at the doctor and say to the doctor, the Lord is on my side. And because the Lord is on my side, I don't have to receive your report. I'm going to be healed in the name of Jesus. Has anybody ever gone to the doctor and got a bad report, but that you trusted God? And the doctor didn't think you would be here right now. If the doctor didn't think you would be here, if you can, you ought to be on your feet and give God some thanks and give God some praise. The doctor had declared you dead, but you decided you were going to live because you realize that the Lord is on my side. And if God be for me, who can be a uh, nobody? Because God, I know that God is with me. I don't have to feel no pain. I, I don't have to feel no job. I don't have to feel going to college. I, I don't have to feel anything. I don't have to feel being a single mother. I don't have to feel being a single father because God is on my side. And if God is on my side, everything I stand in need of, God will provide. The word of God says that my God is able to supply all of my needs according to his riches Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had a praise party. So if you ain't never been to a party, they ain't lost their mind. They ain't lost their mind. They just giving God praise. Because if you don't know my story, you don't understand my praise. Oh, I thank God. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I came to have me a good time today. I came to put the devil on notice and remind that devil I serve an awesome God, a powerful God, an anointed God, a God that has all power, a God that is everywhere, a God that can do anything. Ain't nothing too hard for my God. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, I thank you. God. Oh, I thank you. Now, in that first one, verses 5 through 9, it's important that you understand this. When he says, because God is on my side, I don't fear nobody. I don't fear anybody. And then those verses tell you something very important. It says it's better to put your trust in God than to put your trust in man. Let me say that again. Sometimes we walk around here with our heads all hung down because we had put our faith in a human being. But the word of God says, don't put your faith in man. Put your faith in God because man can die. But God lives forever. Man can turn his back. But God will never turn his back on you. Do I have any witnesses in the house? When everybody else thought you had counted you out. But God was right there with you. He got you through the tough time. He got you through the hard time. He got you through the time you didn't think you were going to make it. He healed your body. He did gave you finances. He did everything you need. She just having a she just having a praise time. She just having a praise time because she's thankful for all that God has done. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm glad this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I'm glad that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm glad that I'm living and please God. Woo! Hallelujah. Uh, not only that, David goes on to say, it is better to trust the Lord than princes. Than princes, he's talking about those in leadership. Yeah, I might vote. Yeah, I exercise my right.
have your vote, but you better believe that my faith is not in Joe Biden. My faith is not in the president. My faith is in God. Because presidents change all the time. But the Bible say that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He never changes. He's the same all the time. Oh, so I, I can't help it. Yeah, I can't help it. I'm, I'm just excited about what God is doing. God is good. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. David gives us another reason. Verses 10 through 14. Up under the heading, surrounded by enemies. But God helped me. You know, enemies can be anything that is trying to take you out of here. Enemies can be a lack of finances. Enemies can be sickness in your body. Enemies can be your wife ain't acting right. Your husband ain't acting right. Your children ain't acting right. All kind of enemies. The Bible said that David said that my enemies surrounded me. David was in many kind of battles. David won the battle because the Lord was with him. Y'all remember the story of David and Goliath with all of the army of Israel was here. But David said, I fight him because God is with me. And David said then, the same God that allowed me to kill the lion, the same God that allowed me to kill the bear is the same God that allowed me to kill this giant. And the Bible said David didn't put on Saul's armor because his armor didn't fit. What is he trying to tell you? That's the message for young people. Stop trying to imitate somebody else and be who God made you. Stop trying to copy cat over everybody else and be an original baby. Be who God made you to be. Don't be a trend. Don't be a trend follower. Be a trend setter. He said, all the nations surrounded me like bees. But in the name of the Lord, I destroyed them all. When he says, but in the name of the Lord, I destroyed them all, what he's talking about here, by God's power. Do I have anybody in the house who has used God's power? I say, do I have anybody in the house? We have a praise party. You got to you act like you in a party. You don't be sitting down on God at no party. You got to wave your hand, stomp your feet. Even if you can't get up, you got to open up your mouth today. Because if God has been good to you, don't you be quiet today. I came to have a praise party. And at the party, we make some noise in the house. Your noise ain't gonna stop me from preaching. Your noise ain't gonna stop me from teaching. God is looking down from heaven on earth. And God knows everything that he's done for you and everything that he's done for me. And we will be out of our mind not to show God I thank you today. God, I praise you today. God, I magnify you today. Today, God, I'm not ashamed to praise you. Because you've been too good to me. Hallelujah. I didn't know how I was going to make it. You made a way out of no way. I remember, I remember when my nephews, he was facing 30 years. And I had went to Florida and I went to visit and I went down to the courthouse with my sister. And the lawyer was saying, it don't look good. I didn't pay no attention to the lawyer. I didn't pay no attention to what he said. I went in the hallway and I started talking to God. And I started saying, God, I need you right now. God, my sister is distressed right now. God, my nephew is facing 30 years. God, even though he don't deserve it, God, I'm asking you for your forgiveness, God. And I'm asking you for your favor, God. And then when the verdict came back in, the judge said, time served 
here. You are free to go. I want to praise God. I left up praising God. I left up saying, God, I thank you. The judge said, the people that put the lawyer said one thing. But let me tell you something. It ain't over until God speaks. Ah, oh, he walked out a free man and he's been free ever since. Because God said, even though you deserve to go to jail, I'm going to let you free and I want to see what you're going to do now. And he's been trying to walk with the Lord ever since. He ain't perfect, but he ain't in jail. Ah, oh. I ain't up here telling you no fairy tales. I ain't up here trying to make you feel good. I ain't up here trying to make you shout. Your shout should be because you know God is good. Your clapping hand should be because you know God is good. Your whatever you doing is because you already know what God has done for you. Hallelujah. 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 David say that the Lord is my strength. And that's why I'm singing this song. Because God has been good to me. All I got to do is, I have a question for you. Have you tried? That's the question I got for you. Have you tried? You going through something right now? Have you tried Jesus? Whatever is coming against you right now, have you tried Jesus? Whatever the doctor said, whatever your supervisor said, whatever your business looks like, things ain't looking right, but my question is, have you tried, have you tried Jesus? I tell you, and I ain't by myself. I found out that Jesus is all right. I found out that I can leave and depend on the Lord. I found out that he'd be with me when I'm up. He's with me when I'm down. He's with me when I got money. He's with me when I'm broke. He's with me when I'm well. He's with me when I'm sick. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to have somebody that's with me no matter what my circumstances are. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's a good word right there. Hallelujah is a good word. Anybody understand? They said that hallelujah is the highest praise. Anybody want to give God the highest praise? If you want to give God the highest praise, you ought to open up your mouth at this praise party and you ought to say hallelujah. I just, I just wish I could get somebody who's got enough energy in your leg to stand up on your feet and join me in saying hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise. Let's give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I just want to give him the, I want to give him my best. I want to give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Now, verses 15 through 18 under this title. Rejoicing in deliverance from death. Bring me now just a little bit deep so it won't echo. In verses 15 through 18, David expresses his rejoicing in deliverance from death. You can read it when you get home. The voice of rejoicing and salvation in the tents of righteousness. Tents of righteousness means the dwelling place. It can be in the temple. It can be at your home. It can be wherever it is. It's a place of righteousness. It's a place where you have invited God in and you have made up in your mind that I might not have been living for God to yesterday, but today is a new day. And I'm going to live for God for the rest of my life. That if you ever make a decision 
to turn away from the world and to turn to God. You will never regret it. And you will be praising God for the rest of your life. Because he'll change you. You will think differently. Talk differently. Live differently. Still have a party, but it won't be at the club. Still have a party, but it won't be at nobody's house. Have a party at your own house. I had a praise party early this morning. When I woke up, the Holy Ghost said, put you some praise music on. And I put me some praise music on. I was praising God while I was shaving. I was praising God while I was taking a shower. I was praising God while I was ironing my shirt. I was praising God going out the door. I was praising God on my way to the house of God. I came in the house praising God. The word of God say enter into his gate with thanksgiving and praise it on your mouth, out of your mouth. See, see now this, this, this is the reality. Uh -huh. If you are living right now uh -huh. and you can't realize that God be good to you, yeah. you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what your age is. If you sit there like God and they good to you, you got to recheck your life. For those of you who are young, who got parents that think enough of you to keep you as a child, you better get the shot. Because there are children that mama and daddy have. Everybody in this house got a reason to praise God. The fact that you walked in here with clothes on your body that are praise God. When there are people out there that are naked. Oh, let me go a little bit deeper. If you was able to walk in here, that means you still got your feet. You ought to be praising God. I'm going to give you one more, then I'm going to move on. If you woke up and got in your car and knew where to drive to, there are people that get in their car, they get confused, and they can't find their way back home. You need to tell me you can get in your car and know what direction to drive in and get to your destination, and you actually thought that was you doing that? That's God's grace and God's mercy, and you ought to be saying, Lord, Lord, I, I praise you. David said, uh, I'm rejoicing because of the Lord's right hand. And I mean, that with God's right hand, it shows his strength and his power. That's showing that God can open doors with his right hand and close doors with his right hand. I don't worry about people. Because when God is on your side. Uh, let me give a testimony on behalf of the church. The only reason why we in this building now is because God was on our side. We could have still been up the street, down that dirt road. And guess what? When God is on your side and people can't recognize God is on your side, God will move people. Because can't nobody stop what God trying to do. I will go to bank after bank. They say, well, you don't have enough numbers. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough nothing. And then the Lord will send me somewhere and they turn down and the Lord will say, go back to where you left. I'll go back to where I left and the man that I was talking to wasn't there no more. Somebody else was there to talk like they understood that I had the favor of God. That the church had the favor of God. Because let me tell you something. You don't have to fear no man and you don't have to fear no woman. All you got to fear is the Lord. If you fear God, 
and walk up right with God, anything that's trying to hinder what God has planned for your life, God will move it out of the way. I ain't talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. Honor God. I honor God. Let me give you part of my why I praise God the way I praise God. There was a time I couldn't even take care of my own family. But something happened. I was distressed. And I was in trouble. Because I didn't know how I was going to keep the lights on. I didn't know how I was going to keep water running. I didn't know how we're going to keep the roof over our head. But I went to my office one day and I cut the lights out. Nobody even knew I was in my office. And I was down on my knees. And I was praying, God, you told me I have to take care of my family. And God, look like ain't nothing working right right now. But I need you to move, God. And while I was on my knees, my phone rang in my office. And when my phone rang, my friend was on the phone and said, they got a job down at the State Department. They're looking for somebody that got a financial background. You ought to apply for the job. Then the Holy Ghost said, it's time to stop praying. Get yourself up. Cut these lights on. Go get in your car and fill out that application. And I got a good report for you. That same job, I retired from that same job because I was on my knees in need, crying out to God. He heard me. He answered me. And he blessed me. And the good news that I have for you if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. David goes on to say, God will keep him from death and present crisis. He will live and declare the works of the Lord. See, see, it's one thing for God, for you to ask God to keep you alive. But why do you want to live? Do you want to live just for yourself? David said, the Lord is going to keep death away from me. So I can declare the works of the Lord. See, so many people want God to bless them, but they don't want to do nothing for God. Nothing for God. No time for God. Too busy with life. Too busy with this. Too busy with that. You should always make God your number one priority. I don't care if you're in college. I don't care if you're working a job. I don't care how old you are. If you got enough sense to realize there's a God, you ought to put him first. First before your husband. First before your wife. First before your children. Now you got to pray. Now watch this. Watch this. Let me tell you why you ought to put him first. Because if you put him first, then you know how to treat your spouse. If you put him first, you'll know how to raise your children. Amen. See, the, the, the trouble of the world is they don't love God. Amen. Wherever God is missing, I promise you chaos. I promise you confusion. I promise you a whole lot of complaining and fussing and fighting and not making no progress because you left God out. You can change your life today by accepting the invitation that Jesus Christ has given. And the Bible says in Revelation, he stands at the door When he stands at the door of your life and knock, what does that mean? I'm going to open up the doors of the church here shortly. You feel something pulling on you, it ain't the devil. Let me put it this way. If you feel something pulling on you to make you go forward, that's God. If you feel something pulling on you to hold you back, that's the devil. So you know that the Lord is speaking to somebody right now. I feel it in my spirit. I feel that this praise party, that the Lord is speaking to somebody right now. The Lord is saying, you've been crying out to me. You've been asking me to do some things in your life. But I'm waiting on you. You ain't waiting on me. When you make your move, I make mine. Yes, 
David goes on to say uh, the song of, of great deliverance, to open, open the gates of righteousness. That's like entering into the house of God. And through which righteous people shall go. Those individuals who have made up in their mind that we're not perfect people. We're righteous in this regard. We have a desire to please God. And even when I mess up, I fess up. Because I understand what 1 John 1, 9 says, but if I confess my sin, God is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verses 21 through 24 talks about the cornerstone. It talks about Jesus Christ as the cornerstone. And it says that they rejected him. They rejected Jesus by in his time. And people are rejecting Jesus right now. But they said, well, I think this is important. I want you to make I want you to, I gave you these scriptures so you can go home and reread them. And hopefully what, 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 what God has given, the Holy Ghost has given me to share with you might bring it, open that word up to you and give you greater revelation now. It says that even though they rejected the cornerstone, he still became the cornerstone. I got happy when I saw that. Because that told me that people can reject me, but they can't stop me from becoming what God called me to be. That's for you too. That ain't just for me. That's for you too. They might reject you, but they can't stop God. They might reject you, but they can't stop God. Amen. I want to share something with you that's very important that caught my attention. Jonathan, go back to verse number one. I want you to see something about verse number one. I've told you over and over that you and I have to finish with God. You can't just start with him. You got to finish with him. Now, what I want you to understand is this. I just want you to catch it. Now, verse 1 to verse 29 are like bookends. You know how bookends to keep everything in order. And in between verse 2 to 28 is what I call life journey. But if you stay with God, you'll end up like you started with God. Watch this. In verse number one, David says this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Go to verse 29. Now, David went through this. Enemies done attacked him. He done been through all kind of stuff. Going through all kind of stuff. He come all the way back. And he done came through all the trial because God was on his side. And David closes out Psalm 118 just like he began 118. In verse 1, he said, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Verse 29, he said, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. What David saying now, that even though I went through, even though the enemy came against me, even though I thought I was going to die, even though all of that, God got me through everything. And the same God was, I say, oh, give thanks to the God in the beginning because this verse is endure forever. When I get to the end of my journey, I'm going to say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Now, I, I, I was looking for, I was looking for an acronym. For uh, praise, I couldn't find no acronym for praise. But I, if you can't find what you're looking for, maybe God want to give it to you. And so I was like, the Lord gave me the acronym for each level that it meant something. They put that up there for me, gentlemen. The one about praise. This is the acronym he gave me. He said, the P represents power. The R represents resisting. The A represents all. Invitation. Every time Satan tempts us 
To disobey God is an invitation to sin. Power resisting all invitations. Sin extend. Extend means offer. Every day of our lives, Satan is trying to offer us something that might satisfy us individually but displeases God. And the reason and the way that you overcome the temptations of this world is you break out in a praise. Because when you start praising God, God will give you power. Power to resist all invitations of sin and extends. Uh, I found something what, what uh, party means. Put that up for me, Jonathan. When you think about a phrase, part of power to, to resist, power resisting, all invitations, uh, sin extends, and then when you get to the party, the party means praise the Lord because he's what? An ace that acknowledged Jesus Christ as Savior, and all of you remember Jesus Christ sacrificed, and the tears tell somebody tell how Jesus Christ has changed us, and the wild yield to the Holy Ghost. Anybody want to yield? Anybody want to give him some praise? Let's get a little praise party right now before I open up the doors of the church. Break out in a praise for God. Because God is good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Those that can't let us stand up on our feet. Those online, I'm talking to you too. You don't have to be in this building to get saved. You don't have to be in this building. Put it on the chat. Put it in the chat box. I want Jesus today. Put your phone number, put your contact information. We'll reach out to you. Because right now, this ain't no time to be unsafe. Every person under the sound of my voice needs to be saved right now. If you're not in the right place with God, today is a good day to get right with God. I don't care what age you are. You're not too young to accept Jesus Christ. As your Lord and your Savior. We are now opening up the opportunity. And I told you that if you see and feel something pulling you, and say, Go, that's God. But if you feel a resistance saying, No, you better not go now, that's the devil. Tomorrow, is not promised to anybody. Yes, and I share with the people of God on Tuesday night that the Holy Ghost told me, the Holy Spirit told me, do not put off for tomorrow that which you can do today. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to get saved. You can be saved right now. Come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to pray. And while I'm praying, you need to be pressing your way up and say, God, I surrender to all I give unto thee. My heart, my mind, my spirit. Father, we come right now at the most critical time of the worship experience. It's decision time. There's someone under the side of my voice, present and online, who has not accepted your son Jesus. And the devil is trying to hold them back today, but I pray in the name of Jesus that them strongholds are broken right now in Jesus' name. Give them the strength to resist the temptation of not accepting your son Jesus. That they can get right with you right now. There are some parents under the sound of my voice who have children that are looking up to them, God. 
left them set the right example by surrendering the day. That their children might know and understand the need that I have to have a right relationship with Jesus. Move by your power. Move by your spirit. Save someone today. We'll be ever mindful to give your name glory, honor, and praise. For it is in Jesus Christ's name that we pray, believe, and receive. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise him. Yes, Lord. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him.
so glad I learned how to give. I remember the time I had nothing to give. I'm so glad I got something to give, and I don't know what to do. Because God has been good. God has been good. Amen. Praise God. All right, those that can understand as we give the blessing to the offering and give thanks to God for having an opportunity to give into his kingdom. Father, I want to take this time to say thank you as the basket is being raised in the name of Jesus. We know that the basket represents not just us giving to you, but that basket also represents that we have received from you. Because we cannot give what we have not received. Bless it, bless the people of God, and a special prayer for people who don't understand that they can't beat your giving. And that the tithes and offering God help us to realize it's not about money, but it's all about trusting you. And we trust you, God. Yes, God. We have faith that you can supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. For this is thy servant's prayer. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, believe, and receive. Amen. 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 Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. Say, eat you all of this and remember of me. You know, we take the cup, put the cup over our head. The cup represents the blood of Jesus. During the, during the time that Jesus put a plague on Egypt, you see, wherever the, wherever the death angels see the blood of Jesus, he shall pass over that eye. We're asking God that he protects us everywhere we go and everything that we do. That we're all covered with the blood of Jesus. And on that night, Jesus Christ says, this is my blood in the New Testament which has been shed for thee. Drink ye all of it and remember for me. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, special events. Deacon S. Lawson is coming with the special events. As they take the cups up. Good morning. morning. Y'all still having a praise party? Amen. Our special announcements on um, pastoral installation. This is for Henry M. Simons, and that's today, August 7th at 5 p.m. And this is at Truth Church and Ministries. Officiating is Bishop Eric Davis from Word of God Church and Ministries International. And that's today at Truth Church and Ministries. 
And let's get excited out. MPBC, Empowering Women's Women's Conference, amen. Hashtag oh, give me a rooted disciplines of a godly woman. Um, that's September the 9th and the 10th. Hallelujah from 8 to 1. And our very own First Lady Reverend Rebecca will open up for us. Amen. Amen. On Saturday, we'll have our sister Charlanda Thomas. Amen. Sister Connie Warren. Amen. Sister Michelle Davis. Amen. Sister Deborah Grady. Amen. Sister Christopher Shett. Amen. And our main speaker is Sister Asia Jones. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Registration costs are $45 in person and $25 online. And we do have registration sign-up sheets for you guys. And the information can also be found on our website. So please share, share, share. Amen. This is from the Friends and Family Day. 1021 and 1023. Amen. We're going to have a mortgage burning service. Amen. 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 And that's going to be a praise party. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This year our Friends and Family event is very special and history in the making. We have a mission and a goal to completely pay off the mortgage by or before November 2022. Yes, Lord, our payoff is $37,000. Amen. We believe we in God. 74 members to pay that $500 assessment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Unless somebody just want to write a check. Hallelujah. Amen. We Amen. believe in God. Amen. 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 We are believing and trusting God that this will be done. Now is the time. And we are taking assessments from now on out. Amen. Going forward. Um, Amen. Please complete your envelope today and we will track our progress in the sanctuary. Join us. Be a part of history and something great. And we can do it. We believe in God. Amen. Amen. No Trust God. Have faith. And it takes each and every one of us. Now this is special. And we're going to do this another praise party. Amen. A 99th birthday drive by. Yes, sir. Amen. Mother Lucy Watson, the oldest member in our church, if the Lord spare her life, will celebrate her 99th birthday, birthday on Saturday. Y'all give it up. Hallelujah. Give it up for Mother Lucy. On Saturday, August the 13th, we are going to do a drive-by for Mother Lucy's birthday. And if you would like to join the drive-by, we will meet here at the church on Saturday, August the 13th at 1230 p.m. Come help us celebrate our oldest member's 99th birthday. So y'all decorate your cars Amen. and make this day special. For Mother Lucy. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Amen. Y'all give the Lord a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. We, we, we believe in God. We, we just don't want the church to be dead free. All of us going to be dead free. We will not be slaves to the members. We will be we will be the members and not the bowers. Amen. We will be the head and not the tail. We will be above and not beneath. Amen. Amen. That don't happen magically. Now you have to have some discipline to become dead free. You got to have some self-control. Amen. Because one thing that I want you to remember as we get ready to go is remember this. If you come from under debt, you can almost do anything you want to. And don't have to worry about it after you've done it. <laughs> Did y'all enjoy the praise party today? I had a, if you didn't have a good time, I had a good time. Amen. Praise God. Let us get ready to go. Stand up on your feet, those that can. You know. Thank God for you. I praise God. I looked back out there and I got excited because I saw some people praising God. I saw some people that have a reason to praise God. And so we thank God. And so what we're doing, we're going to plead the blood of Jesus over you because nowadays everything in the streets are uh, in chaos and people are losing their mind. But we're covered under the what? We're covered under the what? The blood of Jesus. Father, we want to take this time to say thank you. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. 
each and every one of us humble ourselves in your presence right now. And we declare and decree that we're covered under the blood of Jesus, that no sickness, no disease, no virus, or anything of the sort will come near us, that you will cover our automobiles, that any mode of transportation that we're using, you will give us a safe travel there and back. I pray now for all that will be traveling, the First Lady and Brother Mike and any other people that I don't even know that are traveling, that you get them to their destination and bring them back home safely. Keep us all covered. And we'll be ever mindful to give your name, glory, honor, and praise. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest through in the Bible with thee, henceforth and forevermore. And all the people, God, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise.